Alright guys, so <clears throat> one of the uh, major things that I find uh, I see people that uh, you know are, are apprehensive about doing this and, and it's the plumbing aspect of it. So I just want to kind of simplify it. It's, it's really not as hard as it looks. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to do. It's kind of hard to screw up. Um, the fine tuning gets a little bit more into it, but, but even that is still very beginner stage plumbing. None of this is, is super hard at all. Okay, so I'll break this down into sections. Um, basically, my main flow is what we're looking at here. Zoom out. All right, so this is <clears throat> this whole line here is where it, where it directs my flow either to the grub heads or back to the tank, and that line starts the pump. So see right here where we have this uh, we have this cutoff here. So we have this cutoff here. And what that does is it allows me to reduce the pressure coming in to uh, where the coming from the pump to where I deliver it to any part of the system that I choose. So right now it's completely open. Um, with the setup that I use, I use two pumps. So I was uh, kind of worried about the flow being uh, too heavy, so I'd have to dial it back, and I didn't want to dial. It back uh, any other way but from directly or have the flexibility to uh, you know dial it down right here all right so yeah it goes into that union there and what a union does is it allows you to uh, separate sections you know so uh, <clears throat> this is all real intricate and everybody is you know how do I get it back there and whatnot well you can't get it back there in one whole piece you're gonna have to break it apart and because I like to be able to, you know, um, change things up every once in a while. I want the flexibility to where I don't have to redo this entire plumbing thing because i got to cut it out. So I put these, I actually have three unions. I have one here, one right there, and one right there. Alright, so basically what those do <clears throat> is it allows me to break apart the system into chunks that I can maneuver in to uh, the tight spaces that they take up with it being an indoor system. All the bracing that I designed for this is uh, it's not easy to take apart, so it's a simpler version to, or a simpler way to do this is to break apart the plumbing and the uh, pump apparatus as opposed to taking apart all these shelves. Obviously that makes sense, but uh, you know sometimes when you're planning these little stuff like that, it gets in the way. I know it did with me, I figured it would just all be one system, I had to go back and get these unions because as I started putting them together I realized that I wasn't going to be able to take this apart without breaking it or cutting it and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, so those allow me to, to accomplish that goal, <clears throat> my cutoffs, and what my cutoffs allow me to do is to choke pressure back and it allows me to, like, uh, say for this one, see this one's about halfway open. Uh, it only turns 90 degrees and that goes from open to close so it goes along with the flow if it's perfectly straight with this tube here it's good or it's fully on and if it's per perfectly perpendicular it's off so I have it about 45 degrees so it's about halfway on <clears throat> what that does is allows me to ratchet down the amount of flow that I get coming into the grow beds you know here because if I got too much, it never breaks the siphon. I'm pumping more water in than the siphon's able to pull out. And, uh, you know, so then your bed stays constantly on its lowest level. Uh, it's no good. <clears throat> so you definitely need the ability to choke back some of the pressure on the pump. Because you're not going to find a pump that has perfect pressure. You might, but, you know, the odds are if you find a pump that has perfect pressure are... Uh, Slim. I mean, it, you can if you do enough research and whatnot, know exactly what your head height is and where your plumbing is actually going to sit when everything's set up. But I mean, this is really a much easier method and takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. You can just, you know, like I did, <clears throat> tone back some of the pressure, and then you have perfect flow in your grow beds. All right. So in my system, I have four cutoff valves, 
two up here at the top of the grow bed, like I discussed, control the flow in the grow bed. Alright, I have these two mentioned, uh, the, the one I mentioned before, which is this one we're looking at, and then I have this one. <clears throat> and this is my tank return valve, which controls the flow of the, uh, the water going back to the tank. And why this is important to be there is because this is at a lower point. My grow beds are higher, they sit up top here, so what would happen if I didn't have this is any excess pressure would just be kicked back into uh, the tank. And, uh, well, now the biofilter, but when I originally designed this, this pipe actually just went straight back into the tank and caused, you know, kind of a current in the tank, which turned out to be not so great. Um, but I'll get into that later. But yeah, so you need to be able to choke off different pressure points. and th it, That's the biggest part of the planning, uh, is your fit and the pressure control. You know, everything else, how, even if you waste a couple pieces of PVC fittings, they're only like 25 cents. You know, you're not going to have hundreds of dollars in this plumbing. I mean, I, if you're doing huge systems, you might want to, you know, do test runs and whatnot. But basically, the two things you need for plumbing, besides the fittings, now, I've seen people do this with hack saws all the time, and you can get actually a straighter cut, but for me, easy is always best. You know, I have, I bought these for, I want to say like $14. Alright, so yeah, these are your basic PVC cutters. What they do is they have, which is already done here, a ratcheting system, and as you close it, it tightens on the pipe and cuts through. I mean, it, it's as easy as it gets, you know, uh, I really like these, they come with a nice lock on there so that once you're done, everything stays and the blade stays where it can't hurt you, everything's tucked nicely. <clears throat> you know, I never had a problem at all out of these. Alright, the other thing you gotta have is pipe glue. Now, like I say, I only piped about halfway through my system. Anything that was gonna be pressurized uh, <clears throat> before or the, uh, the cutoffs to where I control the pressure. If it's got pressure behind it, I put uh, the all-purpose cement on there. And the reason I did that is so that when I go to bed at night, I don't have to worry about the pressure pushing the fittings apart. And, uh, you know, I come into the morning and the entire fish tank is emptied out onto the floor and you have major issues. So, you know, it just kind of safeguards you from big messes and, and catastrophes to your systems. Alright, so one of the things that I did not plan on um, when I initially was building this system and putting the bracing in and whatnot is how do I get this pump filter unit that was on the turtle tank initially out? Well, after I put everything together, I couldn't. So it just sat there for a while. <clears throat> and as I was saying earlier, the uh, tank return line, stand camera focusing, the tank return line that was attached here. Uh, that was causing a current in the tank and it was pushing everything one way or the other into one corner usually over by where the pumps are and that meant that you know where the basking area is it's the opposite of the tank from that so it kept trying to put the uh, floating pontoon thing over in the corner so what I did instead was I designed this system where I just turned up the tank return put another 90 on there and used some scrap pieces to run it to uh, the old filter and what it really does is just goes through those carbon filters like like it would if it was sucking from the tank uh, without this system on it and runs through the filters and whatnot. The only thing that doesn't work now is these drums don't spin and aerate the water or whatever the hell they used to do. Uh, now they just kind of sit there but <clears throat> it works pretty good because it aerates the water down in the tank and it doesn't cause a current or anything. And every bit of water that is running through the system gets filtered one way or another, be it through the grow beds or the old uh, filter assembly. So it worked out pretty good. As you can tell on this section of pipe here, I didn't have a 90 degree angle, so I just took a piece of pipe and bent it with a lighter and some patience. You know, you just heat up a section, bend it a little bit, heat up a section, bend it a little bit, heat up a section, bend it a little bit, and you can eventually turn a pipe. I mean, if you got the patience, that'll work. If not, just get a 90 degree fitting. I just didn't want to drive all the way to lows for one fitting, especially on something that really didn't wasn't a 
major priority or anything. Alright, so then we get to the pump level. And what I've done here is I've connected two pumps. Um, the idea was that the pumps weren't going to be strong enough to pump water both up to the grub heads and a, a water return to the tank. And I was really worried about uh, the water return and aerating the water and whatnot. And I didn't really count on the grub beds aerating the water as much as they do. So in hindsight, it's kind of overkill. But what it does do is it offers you peace of mind as far as redundancy. Now what I would do differently if I was going to build a system like this um, is put two cutoffs, one on each one of these pipes here. And what that will allow you to do is cut one off and unplug it. And that way the pump drives, one pump drives the entire system. If that pump were to go out, you can cut that other one off and open this one up, plug it in. And in, in 10 minutes, you got another pump run instead of having to pull the system out, um, make sure that, you know, your new pump is here, waiting, um, you know, you put the new fittings on, you put it all back in, it, it's a, just a quicker, easier fix, and really, you know, um, when accidents happen like that, usually it's been hours before you even notice, so it's important to uh, have a fix ready, you know, and plan ahead in that aspect of it and whatnot. Um, like I say, I did not do that. I should have, and I will. Um, the next time that I do filter maintenance, I'm actually going to cut those pipes and add the sections of uh, cutoff valves to each one of these so that I do have that option. I don't want to play with, uh, you know, is it possible to run the system on one pump? And if it is, then I'm going to do that. And if not, I have a way to, uh, an easier way to clean out. Because what you can also do is cut the pressure off at the top where I showed you earlier of, of after both these pumps combine and go up, there's a pressure control up there. I can cut that off and then have the pressure just running from one pump into the other and blowing out all the trash that's in the pump itself. It'll blow out and then you can swap the flow and blow out the other pump. And easier cleanup and whatnot. Now all that trash will go back into the pump, but you know, it'll probably end up in the grow bed instead of depositing on the pump since it's broke loose. Um, with the turtles, they have uh, a lot more waste per size from what I read on the internet and what my wife tells me. She's a marine biologist student. And uh, so that was another consideration. So we wanted to make sure that we had uh, enough pump power even once they, the filter starts to get clogged down. If you look here, you can tell that the, the pumps are just full of crap. And I actually need to blow them out, but since I was going to make a video, I didn't want it to be all cloudy with sediments and whatnot. Now, just a little bit of scrubbing on the glass I've done with this little glass cleaner here um, has caused sediment to get swirled up and whatnot. So, um, you know, if that's something that needs to be done, I'm not going to do it for this video. I might do it in a subsequent video, but. Um, yeah. I'm not going to pull this whole pump assembly out and show you what I've done and whatnot. I've used the back of the old filter pump combo, uh, pump filter combo, however you'd say that, probably pump filter. Uh, and I've zip tied it together to create um, basically a base to mount these pumps to to keep them all one solid unit and have some protection just in case the uh, turtles decide to screw up the pumps. You can't really because this, uh, this bracing's here. Sonny likes it when you put your finger on the glass, it'll follow you around. Uh, yeah, we've had this cichlid for almost five years now. Crazy. Uh, we brought him to the big tank. But so yeah, that, this is the, uh, the pump manifold is what I call it. I don't know if that's a proper term or not, but it sounds proper. Uh, then we have our union, like I said, up there, which allows me to take the pump manifold out in one section. And then I do the flow control area in one section, and then I have the, the grow beds in one section. Uh, the grow bed pipes in one section. Alright, so I, I already have videos up on how bell siphons work, just the basic idea and whatnot. So I'm, I'll briefly just go over this real quick, just to finish up on my entire plumbing section uh, from the pump to the tank and then back to the uh, from the tank to the pump then to the grow beds and then back to the tank. 
So we have a bell siphon cap, which this is just to keep some of the debris from actually going back into the tank. It doesn't really serve a purpose because of the way I've done my grub beds. More than anything, it just kind of keeps this thing from flopping around as much. Uh, you got your basic bell siphon. Got holes cut in it. I had to do all these different holes so that it breaks the siphon and sucks enough air. Uh, this is my first bell siphon attempt, so if uh, you want to look at the proper way to do bell siphons, this is probably not it. I'm just explaining how my system goes and whatnot. And then you have your standpipe, and the most expensive part of the plumbing is going to be these fittings here. The, uh, what are they called? Bulkhead fittings. They are like $2 a piece. So, you know, an overall, well, actually, the, uh, the PVC cost that was the most expensive, but single fitting union was $2 a piece, so that's, that's kind of high. It's, I mean, it's not terrible, and you only need one per grow bed, so if you only run one grow bed, well, you only need one, so $2 ain't like bad. $4 ain't like really bad. Uh, let's see, yeah. I also uh, drilled a hole in the top of this so that it doesn't actually create a bell siphon effect, and once you get to the maximum uh, water height necessary for this and whatnot. Uh, and then, you know, it goes through. I don't think I can take it down there. Maybe you can see it through here. No. Basically, it just goes in a straight line from here down into the tanks. Uh, you know, no fittings or anything. The underside of the bulkhead fitting has a slip fitting for the uh, three-quarter inch PVC, and it just drains in the bed. And that's it. You know, it's pretty straightforward. As I was saying, uh, actually, it's half-inch pipe out of the bottom of the grow bed. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. I'll uh, give you guys some more updates as uh, as I have time. Thanks, guys.